that involve a little bit of risk. Um, and that's what I decided to do. You see, all of us are given different gifts and different talents. And part of the great joy in life is finding out what we like to do and what we like to do best. And then stepping forward and testing the waters. So I decided to step forward and test the waters, and I went to college, a two-year community college. I graduated, worked, and then I transferred up the road to WPI, where I earned a bachelor's degree in engineering. Then I went to work for Raytheon Company, and at nights I went back to school and earned a graduate degree in engineering and also an MBA. And then the problems started. The problems that stem from working in a state that is not at all business friendly. I worked for a small business up near Gardner Nass, Wayne Roy. Eventually, it was bought and moved out of state. Next, I worked for a company called Behringer Company in Marblehead Nass. And that company was eventually bought and moved out of state. My next employer was right up the road here in Worcester on South First Street called Anderson Products. And eventually that company was bought and moved out of state. Finally, I worked at a small business in the Manchalk section of Sutton called Newport Valley Company. And I worked there until that company was bought and moved out of state. <laughs> the last day that I was laid off, the very day I found a business for sale, and I bought it, and that's what the business that I own now. I wish it was that simple, and I wish it was that easy. The bank required that I max out my home equity line, that I put a third lien on my house, that my mom put a lien on her house, and I signed a personal guarantee. And then lastly, and just for good measure, they required that I take out an insurance policy on my life, name the bank as the beneficiary, and force me to pay the premium. I tell you all this because I want to make sure that you understand things have not been handed to me. That like you, I've had to work for them. But I also want you to know that I've been out of work and unemployed for five times. This is who I am. Yep. But I would also like you to know that there's one other thing that you should know about me. I am a very proud member of the Tea Party. <laughs> called a member of the Tea Party. Hmm. Anything else there? Well, <laughs> anybody want to hear something about where we are today in regards to the state of Massachusetts? Yes, I would. You said you were unemployed, you had a hard time. You answer a lot of voices here. We're in a hard time right here in the Massachusetts. We have a lot of taxation, a lot of regulation. I'm Christopher Mader from the Meat and Potato Show. We have a huge regulation, top-down government that we're dealing with right now. I and everyone, and, I and, and, and everyone, there there? everyone, talks there the everyone talks about the jobs. Everyone talks about the jobs. Give jobs, give jobs. I want to hear what you have to say about giving you'll jobs. Listen, you'll hear it. There are many issues that are facing uh, the state here, and I think that all of them stem from one issue, and that is, will we fight for small government and individual freedom, or we will, will, we, will we allow big government to get bigger and bigger and erode those freedoms? The very issue of small government and individual freedom is a foundational pillar of the Republican Party. And I want to make this especially clear. I am a Republican. I am a proud Republican. I am not afraid to be called a Republican. I do not shrink from being associated with the Republican Party. I am a full platform, no excuses necessary, loyal and proud Republican. This state, this state is owned by the Democrats. Our governor is a Democrat. If we had a lieutenant governor, he would be a Democrat. And there are super majorities in the House and in the Senate on Beacon Hill that are Democrats. The interesting thing, the Democrats own the state. 
That means they own all the problems. They cannot blame the Republicans for anything. That's for sure. So, if the Democrats' policies were working so well, people and businesses should be flocking here. But they're not. They're leaving. They're being driven away. As a result of the last census, we lost the congressional seat. And we lost the vote in the Electoral College. The Democratic stranglehold on Massachusetts has taken the life out of the state. It has turned us all blue. The proof of any policies can be shown in the audit of, of their results. And so, the USDA told us that before Governor Deval Patrick took office, there were 450,000 food stamp or SNAP uh, recipients. During the last seven years of uh, Governor Patrick's tenure, or should I say reign, that number should go down. The Democratic policies were working, people should be back to work. But those numbers have not gone down. And they've not gone up by 10% or 15% or 50%. Those numbers have doubled. They've increased by 100% to 900,000 people in the state of Massachusetts that receive food stamps or SNAP benefits. My friends, this is big government, which means bigger bills for you and for me with no benefits. The Democrats or our liberal friends honestly believe that if we had one more program that poverty would be eliminated. Where I come from, traditional assistance means transitioning people from unemployment to work. I've been there. I know how it works. In the Democratic view, transitional assistance means transitioning welfare from generation to generation to generation to generation. It wasn't that long ago that Vice President Joe Biden told a black audience that they would be put back in chains if Republicans were put in office. Really? Really? The Democrats have a problem, you see. It's a big dilemma. They want to talk about jobs, but they also know that if people get jobs, they get a paycheck. And the single biggest thing that turns a Democrat into a Republican is a paycheck. We see how big our taxes are, and we see how small our take-home pay is. So what's a Democrat to do? Well, in this state, especially in this state, the Democrats have made entitlement programs so enticing that they have taken away the desire for some people to stop looking for work. The Democrats have made people dependent on government. The Democrats have traded entitlements for votes. The Democrats have taken away the sense of accomplishment that goes with a job being well done. And the Democrats have taken away the God-given right to the pursuit of happiness. And they traded it for a stale dream of a subpar life dependent on the Democratic Party. In a word... Well said, well said. In a word, the Democrats have re-enslaved people. Mr. Biden, you and your party have put people back in chains. And it remains for us as real Republicans to retrieve them. Yeah. One other program that we should take a look at here in Massachusetts is illegal immigration. <laughs> According According to the nonpartisan Federation for American Immigration Reform, there are 190,000 illegal immigrants here in Massachusetts. And it costs us, the taxpayers, 1.8 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars every year, annually. Let's do the math. If we took that amount of money and we spread it equally among the 351,000 cities in Massachusetts, that would amount to more than $5 million in local aid. Once again, my friends, this is big government, which means bigger bills for you and for me with no benefits. As governor, I will make illegal immigration illegal. subsidized.
exercise is done. Like Reagan, like Reagan, we have to uh, learn from the lessons of history in order to embark on a new Republican road to prosperity. About 200 years ago, uh, Alexis de Tocqueville visited this country, and he told our forefathers, your American Republic would endure as long, uh, for as long until the uh, Congress discovered that it could bribe the people with the people's money. De Tocqueville, like Reagan, trusted in people. And they warned of the democratic doom that is ensnaring us with bigger and bigger government and more and more regulations. Our legislature and our governor are fat and happy. As long as they can come to us, the taxpayers, and treat us like ATM machines and take as much money as they want. When I'm governor, there will be a new sheriff in town, and I'm changing the pin on the ATM card. The new code, the new code is B-C-T-O. I want you to know that my, my plans for this campaign go far beyond campaign rhetoric. I will work with anyone anyone who supports our idea of smaller government. I support democratic legislation that shrinks the size of government. As a practical example, I support Democrat Senator Brian Joyce's idea of eliminating the Governor's Council and eliminating the position of Lieutenant Governor. By the way, has anyone noticed uh, former Lieutenant Governor Tim Murray missing from Beacon Hill recently? No. He's, no, uh, he's with so. the Worcester. He's the with the Worcester Chamber of Commerce, and it seems like the Chamber of Commerce uh, believes that good business is seeking favors from government. <coughs> Interesting. Interesting. He never got prosecuted either for that uh, midnight ride. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am running for governor to ensure that government keeps its promises. If we cannot trust government, it's no use talking about anything else. And so when our big government promised us that when the turnpike was paid for, the tolls would come down, has that happened? No. So as governor, one of the first things I do, the tolls come down and the toll booths come down along with them because government cannot lie to its citizens. When the income tax was increased above 5%, we were promised that it would be temporary. When that promise was broken, we all got together and we voted to have it returned to where we were promised it would be. And then our big government just ignored us. They ignored the will of the people. How brazen, how brazen of them. As governor, that income tax is rolled back to where we were promised it would be because government cannot lie to its citizens. When the sales tax was increased above 5%, we were told it would be temporary until revenues increased. And now Duval, the big government Democrat, wants to use excess revenues to do what? To renovate his office to the tune of $9 million. As government, the sales tax gets rolled back, as governor, the sales tax gets rolled back to 5% where we would promise it would be because government cannot lie to its citizens. Let's talk a little bit about Obamacare. Oh, <laughs> or should I call it the Affordable Health Care Act, which, which we all know is the Unaffordable Health Care Act. This was another big government program that was supposed to solve the nation's health care problems. Initially, it was called insurance, but in front of the Supreme Court, they had to admit it was a tax. In the private sector where I live, that's an illegal practice called bait and switch. As governor, I will reject Obamacare because government cannot lie to its citizens. On the issue of taxes, I have signed Grover Norquist's No New Tax Pledge. As governor, I will work for only repeals and rollbacks of taxes. If any new tax or increase for a new toll or new fee crosses my desk, desk I will veto it. Okay. 
some of you before the meeting come up to me and want to know where I stand on Second Amendment rights. I think now's the time to say this. I grew up around guns. My dad owned a shotgun and he had two handguns. And he taught me how to be a responsible gun owner. I worked for Savage Arms out in Westfield and I manufactured guns. And I built my own shotgun. As a defender of the Constitution, I pledge to support the rights of all law-abiding citizens to own and bear arms. Hey! And I will never, I will never sign any new gun law that restricts those rights. When I told my employees that I would be running for office, some were skeptical. They said, you cannot run in Massachusetts as a Republican, and especially not as a Tea Party member. And they said, I couldn't do that because Massachusetts is not a battleground state. But when I look at Massachusetts, I see things a little bit differently. I remember the Boston Massacre. And I remember the battles at Lexington and Concord. And I remember the Battle of Bunker Hill. And I remember how a ragtag bunch of patriots came together and forced the British Army and Navy to evacuate Boston. So when I look at Massachusetts, I don't see a battleground state. I see the original battleground state. I see a state full of people, like they're in this room, that are willing to fight for what they believe in. And that's why I'm running for government. Shrewsbury, on a quiet little side road, there was a small monument, and it lies flush to the ground. If you didn't know it was there, you could easily pass it by. And the inscription there reads, on this spot, Nathan Howe, on April 18, 1775, dropped his plow to answer the call to arms at Lexington and Concord. Now, I still believe that there are patriots here in Massachusetts. Patriots like Nathan Howe, who are willing to respond if someone not only sounds the call, but leads the charge. Someone who's no nonsense, who calls him as he sees him, who's a straight shooter, who's not concerned about doing the politically correct thing, but is very concerned about doing the right thing. Someone who believes, as Lincoln did, that we have a great task ahead of us. That government of, for, and by the people is under attack, and it needs to be redefended. <coughs> Got something else there, Bill? Yeah, is your mom here tonight? <laughs> My mom is here tonight. All right. Hey, mom. How much did I give? <laughs> and I said, Mom, um, I haven't got much experience in <laughs> politics, but uh, from the little bit that I know, I think that is a very dangerous question to be asking any candidate for office, even if it is your own son. <laughs> so I told her, I'm not going to tell you how much to give, but I'm going to tell you how I want you to give. I want you to give, like those big, beaten hill Democrats vote, early and often. <laughs> I, mean, I, I know about it a little bit, but uh, the way I answer that is I have my own common core. It's reading, it's writing, and it's arithmetic. And in the state of Massachusetts, I would add one more thing, and that's geography. So a lot of people think that the mass border ends at 495 or 128. We need a lesson in geography. I don't think that this one-size-fits-all uh, program, either from the federal government or from the state or from the UN, applies. Let teachers teach. Students that are down in Sandwich, or in Groton, or in Westfield, or in Barnstable, they all have different issues. 
The state cannot impose a one-size-fits-all. Let this local school committee with the parents decide what's best for those students and let the teachers teach. Let me. Uh, Mark, you haven't mentioned the labor unions and their thugs. Now, you're running against thugs, and um, they will smear you, and they will misrepresent what you do and what you say, and um, I wish I could until the unions are crushed, you may not have much of a chance, as good as you are. Uh, Scott Walker managed somehow to throw them out, and all of a sudden his state has a surplus, people are making more money, unemployment is up, and I would only ask you, are you going to directly appeal to the trapped teachers, the trapped policemen, and the trapped firemen in their unions, and say, both for me, and those of you that are productive will be making even more, and those of you who are not doing anything will fortunately be finally fired. That's a great. See if that that's, works. A, that's a great question. You're gonna lose. And the lose for the right reason. Scott Walker doing it. It just has to be repeated here in Massachusetts. But I don't. The reason that I'm running is because no candidate believes the way I do is willing to say the things that I do. I think we can do in Massachusetts what was done in Wisconsin. But someone has to stand up and believe those things and not be afraid to talk about them. And then um, if anybody has any questions, you can come on up and ask them. So if you still have your glasses here, uh, I'd like to end with one last post. Um, to patriots of yesteryear and to patriots today, like bound together by the spirit of America, the spirit that started right here in Massachusetts. Long live the spirit of America. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you for staying in the fight. And God bless.